let us uh, switch gears here for the story now of Dennis Rodman. You know, it wasn't that long ago that we had no idea who this kid was. In fact, there was a time when he didn't even want to play basketball. Now we call him the Secretary of Defense. His friends call him Worm. And speaking of friends, you might say life took a big turn when the Worm met a kid named Brian Rich. When I met him, I just, you know, I kind of looked up as him, you know, because he was real tall, 6'8", and he was skinny. And one thing that I remember, he's had, a, had quarter in the, quarters in his ears because he had no pockets to hold his change. He, we went to a basketball camp, and he came there. His mother and father had to literally push him in the door because of the thing that happened to Brian. What happened was a nightmare. At an age when you are just beginning to figure out that life is fun, 13-year-old Brian Rich accidentally killed his best friend in a hunting accident. It's hard, because, you know, when I was, I was here when the accident happened, and it was a mess, you know? It really was. Brian had a good, strong family to back him up, but not even it could help his post-accident depression. Enter Dennis Rodman, a local college star at that basketball camp. Although Rodman was nine years older than Brian, it was best friends at first sight. We got the plan, and he said, I want you to come to dinner. And I'm like, I knew what was coming up. I said, no, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And uh, he said, OK, maybe tomorrow. And what did you know was coming up? Uh, <laughs> This is what was coming. Boquito, Oklahoma, barely 600 people. Robin himself was reared well by his mother in Dallas, but there wasn't a thing in his background to prepare him for the folks here. When I brought him home, they weren't expecting a big 6'8 guy to walk in the house. Was it the 6'8 or the black? I think it was the black, yeah. most likely. Well, Brian, he kept telling me that he had this real nice friend. And he told me that he didn't smoke or drink. And uh, I just assumed it was a little white boy. She heard her husband went in the other room. I know what he's talking about. I said, God, we got a black man in the house. He's six foot eight and he's 21 years old. Anyway, when he come in, we fixed the steak and everything and seemed like Dennis just kind of took in. Steak was good. It was a cattle farm. And the friendship began to grow. After supper, Brian said what kids all over America say. Want to sleep over? That was the first time Brian ever slept in his bed for three months after the shooting act. He used to sleep with his mom and dad because he had nightmares and he couldn't sleep. He wanted to go to school and things like that. I slept down the bunk bed. He slept up here. But when morning came around, Brian was laying in my arms like a little baby, you know, laying literally on me. And then when his mother came in the next morning, she literally started crying and said, and she couldn't believe that he took a test to me. I always said that Worm was a gift from God because he was so good for Brian and I think he was the one that really brought Brian out of his, uh, his state of uh, depression. That day on, I stayed with him for four years. I did not leave the house. I stayed there. I was petrified the whole four years because I didn't know what was going to come out of, out of that situation down there. But they seemed to care for him. Dennis eventually left the riches home, but not their hearts. Like the song says, you can check out any time you want, but you can never leave. And as all families do at reunions, they get choked up. But if you know Rodman long enough, you know this one gets choked up over a lot of things. A lot of good things. Like when he was named the Defensive Player of the Year. I wanted this one so bad. Rodman doesn't just wear his emotions on his sleeve. Alexis is the 20-month-old daughter of Dennis and Annie Bakes. And while neither mother or daughter lives with him full-time, he's as full-time as you can get. She's strong, and she smiles all the time. She's, you know, she's a very happy baby. You get kind of teary-eyed when you talk about Alexis. Yeah, you know, I hate to cry because people say, God, you cry so much. You know, but it's, you know, you're not a man. You know, you're not a person if you don't cry. And, you know, it just makes, you know, it makes me feel good just talking about anything that's, that's worthwhile. He takes a lot of time with Alexis when he's with her and he has a lot of patience. And he knows that when I get impatient with her, he like picks up the slack, which I think a mother and father, that's why you need a mother and father. Can you say rebound? Yeah. Good. <laughs> that's very good. That's all they got to do. Rebound on the floor, huh? Sometimes the best parents are kids themselves. And Dennis Rodman would plead guilty to being a kid at heart anyway. And kids like him, they take time to write him letters from around the country. They take time in lots of countries. 
Brian Rich may have taught Dennis Rodman a thing or two about colorblindness, but somehow you just know that he didn't need any lessons there. And so as mindless racial prejudice continues, it may be worth listening to a young man who graduated from a white family in Oklahoma, a man who clearly understands that people should not be judged by the color of their skin, but the contents of their hearts. All I can say is, you know, we just have to work together because this is the only world we're going to have. And, uh, you know, if we don't work together, hey, we all going to go to hell. Now you know he's outspoken off the court to go along with the way his basketball speaks for Detroit. It's nice to have Dennis Rodman in the game. With that, we'll continue from the Palace as At the Half rolls on after a commercial and a word from your local stations. 